In a certain rundown shrine, in a certain increasingly love-filled town, in a certain island nation whose birth rate was, unbeknownst to all, soon to reverse its course, a god sat in repose. Hasn't it been a while since I was last on screen? The god of love mused to himself in between watching Ghibli marathons. And not in some lame, non-canon side story that the real gods, I mean, uh, authors, probably weren't even involved in. I used to get a lot of cameos, didn't I? A cold sweat ran down his head, twinkling from a sunbeam through a hole in the roof. Rummaging through his bookshelves and tossing open volumes at random, he continued. Hasn't it been a while? since I even showed up as a shitty little doodle in the dust jackets? Am I being forgotten by the world? There could be no more lamentable end for a god. The nameless god of love had seen many of his fellow divine brethren fall through the ages. The gods of Mount Hio aren't alone, even four of the manifold paths for souls to continue after death. A half step removed from the wheel of existence, the details of their former domains escaped him, leaving behind only names without meaning. No, he would not allow himself to be condemned to a similar fate. If he was to be forgotten by the souls of this world, he would simply imprint himself on the souls of another. If there were four walls of ink and paper in his way, he would smash them down. Little by little, he would refine his existence further with every turn, his will one to pierce reality itself. In a narratively convenient contrivance after stealing his resolve, the God of Love sends the presence of someone entering his domain. Someone other than that devilishly terrifying Ajo Rentaru was approaching the shrine. This was it, his opportunity. Quickly muting the desktop size CRT to properly set the ambience, he focused entirely on the fervent prayer the broad silhouette on the other side conveyed. Please, let all the plants and animals of this world get along and love one another. What a pure prayer! He had been dealing with matters of romance so often as of late, he almost forgot his domain of love was myriad in its expressions. From storage to agape, to philia, to... And also, please keep the love between my boyfriend and I, and all his girlfriends, stronger than anything else. The god of love shed a single tear. This was to be his fate after all, wasn't it? How could he escape the karma of those he had unintentionally entangled himself within this world, if he was to make himself remembered in it? Like a rising tide, it was only by being supported by the existence of Aijo Rentaru that his own could be void. So be it. Still, this required a different touch than with the boy. Some facets of this realm had to stay hidden for now. With a trivial expenditure of divine power, he clad himself fully in mortal raiment, suit, microphone, and an empty vessel trailing behind him with a camcorder. Showtime! Bowing once more after completing her prayer at the old yet clearly cared for shrine, Yasashiki Yamame nearly jumped out of her skin and dislodged the butterflies in her hair when she heard a voice behind her. Excuse me, miss. Could we have a few moments of your time? Uh, I... We are from the local Channel 8 News Network, running a segment on those still showing piety to the old ways as the world moves on from them. If you don't mind, would you share a word on what you prayed for here at Ohana no Mitsu's Shrine of Love? Before her was a news crew, a cameraman with an unmemorable face, and an elderly reporter with an almost too memorable bald head and full beard. Despite the startle they gave her, she could feel in her heart that they meant no harm. Aye, there were two things I prayed for, I suppose. First for there to be more love between all the living things in the world. A truly noble wish. I can see you're getting along with living things even now, Yasashika-san, he said, 
nodding to the squirrel perched on her shoulder. She gave her small companion an absent scratch under the chin, chittering happily. And, well, the second... Yes, uh, the second. Well, uh, upright for me to get along with the people I love as well. My, isn't that something? Another commendable sentiment of youth. With that love, the reporter leaned in. Happen to be of a romantic nature? Yamame could feel her cheeks instantly flush at the surprisingly insightful comment. Well, I do have a boyfriend and all. The reporter briefly turned towards the cameraman. The springtime of youth! Yes, as Shiki said, if I may, what is this boyfriend of yours like? Surely he must be passionate to be with a beauty such as yourself. Yamame fruitlessly tried to hunch over and hide the direction the interview was taken, but only ended up looming over the reporter's microphone instead. Still, the fussy feeling in her chest those words elicited demanded a response. Uh, I don't know about all that, but it's true. He sweeps me off my feet every time I see him. No man feet, I'm sure, with your stature. Uh, no offense intended, of course. Yamame could do barely more than nod at that. In the beginning, I could tell it was hard for him, but now I, I can feel... Uh, I, I mean, I see him getting stronger every day, and when I think about it, I just... Such dedication is almost beyond words. The reporter nodded along as Yamame buried her face in her hands to recompose herself. One more question, if you do not mind, yasashika san Since we are at a shrine of love, after all, could you tell us just how your boyfriend makes you feel? I uh, love... Yamame murmured almost to herself. I've been learning a lot about what love is when other people say it. It means a lot of different things to everyone I've talked to. But something that someone who's also near and dear to my heart taught me is that if you can make someone's heart race, no matter how you do it, there's nothing else that feeling can be but love. <laughs> the reporter braced himself against the sheer volume of love unknowingly outpouring from Yamame. What? What pure love? It's almost... too much. Yamame smiled, thinking of all the people who taught her to love and be loved in turn. Being anywhere in my life with Rancheru and Rancheru's family immerses me in a special feeling. I really, 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 really like it. So lost in her feelings, she didn't notice the reporter blasting off into the sky and the cameraman practically disintegrating into mist under the overwhelming burst of love power. That's all for now, folks. See you next time! And as she wandered back down the shrine's path, crossing the gate marking the border between the world Man and Kami, Yasashiki Yamama thought to herself, Wait, did I ever give that reporter my name? <laughs>